good evening in today's session let's discuss regarding occupational pattern in india and sectoral distribution of income in india what do you mean by this when i say occupation that is the main work for a person for the purpose of living so that is the way by working he will be earning for himself and for the family and that is called occupation if you look at india and india's economy rather any country's economy in the world that economy is divided into three sectors primary sector secondary sector and tertiary sector when i say primary sector that includes agriculture and its allied sectors number 2 secondary sector includes the industries meaning the manufacturing sector number 3 tertiary sector is the service sectors that is the reason why agriculture industry and service sector they they all put together will form a country's economy and these are all the sectors that are present in every economy including india but if you look at any country in the world basically every country starts with agriculture over a period of time maybe after you know many years they will be shifting towards the secondary sector so the country will be going towards the you know this industries and manufacturing and immediately followed by services so this is how exactly a country's sectors will move and the people who are occupying larger time in their agricultural activities slowly some people will start shifting to secondary and tertiary sectors so this is how exactly it will happen now the point is that why the people are moving from one sector to the other sector kindly remember if you want a country's economy to be developed at a faster pace the country has to move to the secondary and tertiary sector as long as a country is depending only on agriculture economy will not be developed this is a very 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 important point that is the reason why immediately after we got independence immediately after the commencement of the constitution of india we started our plans those plans are called five year plans and in these five year plans we started giving priority to each sector to boost to those sectors and ultimately we wanted our economy to develop because of those steps that are taken by the governments in the initial years we are at this particular stage but the responsibility of the government is to go for better and better measures continuously and ultimately the country will be reaching a concept called economic development am i clear so this is what we are going to discuss in today's session and our topic is occupational pattern and sectoral distribution of income in india so occupational pattern means so how many what is the percentage of the people that are occupied who got the occupation in agriculture industries and service sector and how much each sector how much each sector is contributing with respect to the income in india that is called sectoral distribution of income in india one of the very 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 important topics we are discussing please pay attention 1 2 3 primary secondary and tertiary sectors i have already explained to you from here let's go ahead and let's try to understand a new concept called demographic dividend you might have heard these words demographic dividend and when it comes to india today among various countries in the world india has the highest demographic dividend so this is really a plus point with respect to you know india but what do you mean by demographic dividend if you look at all the people who are living in india nearly 150 crores of population living in india everybody is not working you cannot expect infants and children to work you cannot expect senior citizens or elderly people to work you cannot expect the people who got 
diseases who are ill who are who have the you know who are incapacitated for some reason we cannot expect all all of them to work but when we talk about a demographic dividend that is a working population in a country but what do you mean by working population working population is the population that is aged between 15 years and 64 years meaning all the people in a country who are between 15 to 64 years of age all of them put together is called the working force meaning they have the capacity they have the ability and they can work but the point is that in order to work they have to get the work meaning they should be employed but if you look at india our larger population today is present here between 15 and 64 that is the reason why india has a larger demographic dividend in the world <coughs> so imagine a situation if all the people between 16 15 and 64 are employed then what will happen that will lead to more productivity more productivity means more economic growth more gdp more national income and the country will be advancing and the country will become a developed nation that is the reason why the central government the ministers at the central level they always mention about the demographic dividend of india please remember so demographic dividend means it is a working population which is more than non working population for example you cannot expect you know infant or children to work they are dependent they are non working force meaning people who are working they have to earn and they have to feed the dependents they have to feed the non working people similarly elderly people you cannot expect you know 70 80 90 years people uh, age people so you cannot expect them to work but the people who are working they must earn and those people should also be fed and if the working population is more than the non working population then that country's demographic dividend is good and india is in such a position you have lots of youth present in india today who are capable of working only thing is that skills must be imparted in them and they should be provided with a suitable and proper employment am i clear so now i will explain you more points regarding demographic dividend generally you know the general definition for your understanding when you use the word demography demography is a study a study of what a particular area what are you studying in that area meaning in a particular area say a country what is the what are the births meaning the statistics that are related to births how many people are there how many people are taking birth how many people are dying what is the income and what is the incidence of various diseases all these statistics put together is called demography is that okay demo means people right so this is the statistics that are related to the people with respect to births deaths income and the diseases and all the statistics put together is called demography clear this illustrates the changing structure of the human population obviously if a number of people who are taking birth is higher than the number of people who are dying so there is a change in the pattern similarly if more people are dying and less people are taking birth there is a change in the pattern that is the reason why so this particular demography illustrates the changing structure of the human population clear that is demography but what do you mean by dividend this word generally you see in the you know during the in share market or you know company profits so the employees or the shareholders will be given certain benefits because the company is earning more the benefits are being passed on to the shareholders in the similar manner when it comes to demography 
so when the statistics are positive in nature those benefits will be reflected in the entire economy and that is called demographic dividend am i clear so hopefully i am clear and you understood these points very clearly from here let's go ahead and discuss more points regarding demographic dividend now look at this closely so when it comes to demographic dividend it refers to the growth in an economy please remember don't try to read demographic dividend directly that is the reason why i told you the meaning of these two words what is demography what is dividend and combined now we are discussing is that okay so this refer this refers to the growth in an economy that is the result of a change in the age structure of a country's population how many people are living between 0 and 15 how many people are living between 15 and 59 or how many people are living between 15 and 64 clear and how many people are living above the age of 64 right so so that is what we are learning under demographic dividend it is the potential for economic gains when the share of the working age population the share of the working age population meaning the people who are between 15 years and 64 years is higher than non working age group more people are working more benefits more dividends dividends are not just only for the people who are working but other stakeholders meaning stakeholders in the sense the people who are present in the country everybody will get benefited that is the meaning of the demographic dividend tomorrow they may ask you in the examination in in a good demographic in a positive demographic dividend what happens clear working population is more than non working population non working population is more than working population both are same both may be at any ratio and your answer should be working age population is more than the non working age population then only that is a positive sign with respect to the you know the growth of an economy and it is called demographic dividend that's it am i clear look at this note i have given the change in age structure is typically brought on by the decline in fertility and mortality rates so generally what's happening if there is a less fertility rate low births if more mortality more deaths so because of this one so there will be a change in the age structure clear in a particular country very 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 important one now let's go ahead look at this i have a question for you right i have a question for you in april 2024 latest imf international monetary fund made a suggestion that if india wants to benefit from population being added to the labor force is it related to demographic dividend excellent one this is related to econ demographic dividend so india is adding more population to the working force is that clear then if india wants to benefit out of this one it has to prioritize substantially higher spending on what is the meaning here we know what is imf international monetary fund right and when it comes to international monetary fund it will always give suggestions one of the suggestions and of course india is a member in imf and india will listen to you know the suggestions and according to imf india's working population is increasing meaning india is adding more population to its workforce right meaning working age population is increasing but india has to get benefited out of that india has to get the dividend out of that 
for this reason india has to spend more on india has to spend more on what number 1 education number 2 health number 3 both one and two number 4 neither one nor two very 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 important one in any economy if you want to grow ahead if you want to move ahead highest priority must be given to education and health so in this particular case then the answer is option 3 that's it meaning both 1 and 2 IMF suggested that if India wants to get benefited out of this, you know, adding workforce, then India has to prioritize its spending on education and health. Very, 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 very important. Who gave this suggestion? The suggestion was given by none other than International Monetary Fund, right? And these type of questions are asked in the examination. You must be very, 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 very careful about this. clear next let's look at the answer yes our answer is correct so meaning both one and two important one i got some note here 65% of the indians are under the age of 35 right also notes very 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 important one very recently i told you that unique tad UNCTAD has projected India's economic growth by 6.5% for the year 2024 i told you yes or no so that was a projection by that is also correct in the examination if there is a question what is the projected economic rate economic growth rate by unicted your answer should be 6.5% clear but here if you look at this one IMF has given new projection because IMF is looking at countries development in a different angle unique tad will take different parameters right but according to IMF IMF has projected a growth rate of 6.8% this percentage you have to remember for the examination what is the projected percentage by unique tad what is the projected percentage by you know imf this is important so according to imf the growth rate of 6.8% for india's economy in the same year 24 25 not withstanding the high rate of unemployment among the youth which according to some estimates was just above 40% in 22 23 so there is a high percentage of unemployment in india despite that imf is projecting that india's economic growth rate will be 6.8% for the year 24 25 am i clear hope you are listening to me very carefully i told you many times listen to me very carefully and very closely these questions will be asked in the examination and i don't want you to miss even a single one am i clear now look at this right so this is over now we have another question we have another question now consider the following statements growth in india was led by public investment growth in india is led by public investment growth in india is led by private consumption both the statements are mentioning about growth in india one statement first statement is saying this is led by public investment second statement is living, is is saying that this is led by private consumption any one of the statements may be correct both the statements may be correct both the statements may be wrong but how do you come to a conclusion here here you understood you are asked to consider the following statements and statement a is mentioning about growth in india is led by statement b is also mentioning about growth in india is led by 
but what typically you can see here is the one is the public investment second one is the private consumption in order to answer this question you should know the meaning of these two words clear without knowing the meaning how do you answer this clear now let me tell you what is the meaning of this particular words public investment right the statement is saying that growth in india is led by public investment public investment is the investment made by the state what do you mean by the state recollect article 12 and article 36 of the constitution same meaning that is given is valid today public means state state means government maybe central government maybe state government maybe local government or any other authority which is related to the government and the government has to go ahead with the investment if the government is coming out with the investment that is called public investment if the government is not investing then there will be no growth that is the reason why growth in india is led by public investment that is correct clear just imagine a situation government is not investing anything then what will happen to the growth growth will be retarded am i clear so this is the meaning of the public investment that is the reason why once you know the basics and the concepts then the subject will become very easy for you got it now next so statement a is correct right so statement b you will see growth in india is led by private consumption what do you mean by consumption here consumption purchasing something and having it right that is called consumption we consume goods and we consume services is that okay now government is investing and government is producing something goods and services so those goods and services must be consumed first of all for to whom the government is you know producing all these things that is for the purpose of the people imagine if people don't consume if there is no consumption by the people then what will happen to the investments all the investments will go waste and government has borrowed so many so much of money from somewhere else and it has invested government will not be in a position to pay back and government will be in debts when government is in debts that is considered to be you know the economic crisis in the country so there will be no development primary sector secondary sector tertiary sector every sector will be affected people lose the employment right so people lose all the opportunities and the country will suffer like anything losing employment means no money with them if you don't have money what do you consume that is the reason why through public investment whatever is being generated it is the people that sh people should consume it as or no if the people are not consuming the right so then there is no point here and the consumption by people is called private consumption am i clear meaning somebody is investing and somebody is producing and the people must consume it both put together will lead to the growth only investment no growth only consumption no growth right why no growth with only consumption you are consuming what is available and you are not producing more because of no investments no investments no consumption no consumption economy will be retarded that is the reason why both a and b are very much correct am i clear very 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 important so what should be our answer here answer should be option 3 over that's it let's check whether it is correct or not it should be correct it should be absolutely correct and we'll be getting a mark in the examination that's it right so kindly remember that is the reason why you should know the meaning of all this you need not worry too much i will be giving you 
you know the detailed explanation with respect to all these aspects next the same thing i have explained here right you can just read here you can just read what is this public investment and private consumption hope you got it hope i am clear nice and uh, you know note private consumption is also called consumer expenditure hopefully you are taking the points please take very good all of you who are watching these classes are really very good because you are all taking the notes and you are all revising the notes for the success in the examination right next we will go ahead look at this so when it comes to the occupational structure of a country refers to the number of workforces which is employed in various economic ventures right so occupational structure of a country means how many people are employed in the primary sector how many people are employed in the secondary sector and how many are in the tertiary sector clear that is the occupational structure and whenever we are mentioning about occupational structure we are taking our working age force into consideration so the people who are aged between 15 and 64 am i clear next note the number of working population employed in agriculture and the associated activities and the number of people involved in manufacture and servicing sectors is known as the occupational structure of the nation i told you already how many people are working in agriculture how many are working in manufacturing and services that is called the occupational structure of the nation am i clear over so hopefully you are getting everything and i am trying to give you my best so that you will be comprehending each aspect now look at this note right latest information write down very clearly don't write down all these things write down whatever i am going to tell you now this is important one according to periodic labor forces survey so this is called periodic labor forces survey who conducted this one it is conducted by an organization called nsso what is nsso national sample survey office that functions under ministry of statistics and program implementation according to this particular survey so called plfs conducted by nsso under the ministry of ministry of statistics and program implementation according to this about 45.76% of the total workforce is engaged in agriculture and allied sectors during 20 to 23 my dear close friends please make a note of this clear very 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 important this is the latest information that i am giving it to you and this is not going to change it till your examination is that okay right shift from primary to secondary sector is common across the globe including india obviously i told you as long as more people are there in the agriculture the country remains to be an agrarian agrarian in the sense it is a society that is depending more on agriculture that is good you are producing food grains but in order to grow in order to develop at the international level the country has to go with the industries and service sector am i clear and this is a very common for all the nations so today if you look at any developed country in the world earlier they were agrarian from agrarian they moved to industria agrarian means agriculture industria means industries am i clear now note i have given something more important here please write down agriculture is contributing 15% of please write down 15% of gva also write down this one gva means gross value added in the total economy 
and has been growing at 4.3 percent during the last six years. Right? Every year we read in the newspaper or we watch in television that agricultural production is increasing. Our productivity levels are increasing and is increasing by millions of tons. Is that clear? Just because we are also focusing on industries, it does not mean that we have neglected agriculture. No. Our agriculture is also increasing. This is growing by 4.3% for the last 6 years. So there is an increase in the output of agriculture. Am I clear? And that agriculture is uh, contributing 15% of the GVA that is nothing but gross value added. Right? So 15% is being contributed by agriculture means rest should be contributed by manufacturing and services. Right? I'll tell you what exactly is the meaning of the GVA or gross value added. Is that okay? Now look at this. Before I discuss with you regarding what is GVA, you please also make a note of this. The industry and service sector which constitutes more than 80% of the gross value added of the country. Right? Just now I have shown you. 15% is being contributed by agriculture. More than 80% is being contributed by in industries and service sector. In GVA, they will ask you what is the percentage of, you know, agriculture in GVA? What is the percent of, you know, industries and, you know, services in, you know, GVA? Now you know the answer. Alright? And it provides employment to 54.4% of the workforce. What is the meaning? So, whatever the total workforce you have today, out of this total workforce, 54.4% are getting employment and they are working in manufacturing and service sector. Clear? But when it comes to agriculture, Agriculture is accounting 18.29% of the GVA in 2009 and this is providing 45.6% of the workforce. 54.4% workforce are in industries and services. 456 are working in agriculture. I am clear. Very, 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 very important one. And this agriculture is contributing 15% of the GVA. More than 80% of GVA is being contributed by industries and services. Am I clear? Right? Understand. Understand slowly. Slowly. No problem. No hurry. Okay, over. Now let me tell you what do you mean by GVA. Right? GVA is nothing but you are measuring something. Gross value added is nothing but you are measuring. What is that you are measuring? In the total economy, what is the contribution of you know agriculture in GVA? What is the contribution of industries and services in GVA? That's it. Clear? Meaning, so this is an economic productivity metric. You are calculating something, you are measuring something. That is the reason why, so GVA is an economic productivity metric that measures. Measures what? Measures the contribution of a corporate subsidiary, company or municipality to an economy, producer, sector or region. Right? So, what is the each sector's contribution in economy? That is a GVA. But how do you calculate? This will provide a dollar value for the amount of goods and services that have been produced in a country. You are calculating in terms of dollars. And you are trying to calculate the value of the amount of goods and services that have been produced in a country minus the cost of all inputs and raw materials 
that are directly attributed to the production this is called gva right please don't get confused with you know national income gdp gnp what we have discussed so this is something different here so this is nothing but an economic productivity metric and you are trying to measure the contribution of each sector is that okay and you are trying to calculate the value of all the goods and services produced in a country minus that minus is really very very important so you are producing okay and you are trying to calculate the total value but here you have to deduct you have to subtract the value of the raw material that it was uh, given in the form of input then only it is called gva that is the reason why the word minus is really very 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 important is that okay hence gva adjust gdp by the impact of subsidies and taxes on products that is the reason why gdp minus subsidies minus taxes you know that is called you know the gva hope i am clear very 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 important one now let's go ahead to discuss more on this right so when it comes to features of occupational structure in india if you look at you know the pre independent india we concentrated meaning the nation concentrated on more on agriculture so there were industries established by you know the british and uh, some indian companies but a large number of population was depending on agriculture so this was the structure during pre independence but after independence it has been changed our own government has been formed and we have established a body called planning commission which is no more existing now it has been replaced by niti aayog we know that one so that planning commission started making plans for the development of india and that led to economic development in india look at this the balance was missing in the structure of occupations the primary sector of the economy attracted more people secondary and tertiary sector was always far behind compared to the primary this is what happened during you know pre independence people were more interested in agriculture because people know the practices in agriculture so less people were attracted towards the secondary and tertiary sectors at that time but now the scenario has been changed now the scenario has been changed look at this now look at this so when it comes to regional dissimilarities in india if you look at some states like west bengal karnataka tamil nadu maharashtra so these are the states with a significant industrialization right so meaning so when it comes to certain states though they were earlier depending on agriculture they started moving towards the establishment of the industries example these states and the significant portion of the people moving from agriculture sector to other sectors clear and that led to the balances of the unbalanced occupational structure of the country earlier all the people majority of the people in the country were depending on agriculture all states but after independence you know some states like you know west bengal karnataka tamil nadu and maharashtra they started moving towards the you know this industrialization so obviously people started getting jobs in industries so people started living agriculture they started moving to the tertiary and secondary and tertiary sectors so that led to the imbalance of occupational structure when it comes to entire india some states are progressing industrially some states are still depending on agriculture where is the balance if it is within the state you can say yes there is a balance agriculture and industry are being given equal priority but we are india and we are one nation so if you look at this entire india we can see a clear imbalance 
that is the reason why if you look at some states like punjab haryana today and also some states like odisha even today also they are depending more on agriculture and like this we can see the regional dissimilarities am i clear next hope you are following everything very clearly and closely next let's go ahead so what are the types of the occupations i already told you so primary occupation secondary occupation and tertiary occupation you know this so when it comes to the occupation it refers to the principal work which a person carries out on a daily basis for the earning purpose that is called the occupation and these are of three types primary secondary and tertiary and you already know what is the meaning of that let's go ahead right so when it comes to the occupational structure you know in post independent india right we got independence we commenced the constitution right and we got our own government we got our first elections in 1951 and 52 and india started moving ahead and india started establishing more industries clear and when it comes to agriculture we are self sufficient even in industries we wanted to become self reliable clear and hence india started giving priority even to the industries am i clear and this helped to create a kind of balance in the indian economy as well as the entire population of the country and after independence equal amount of revenues were collected from the other occupational sectors as well and hence a kind of balance came to be forged into different sectors of the economy earlier most of the amount was coming only from agriculture but because of the, you know these developments different sectors have started right so giving uh, you know contributing more to the economy clear next so from here again we'll be going ahead look at this all right and the same points here so the population started earning from different sources of the economy and the dependence on agriculture has been reduced and it, it led to the increase in uh, increasing dependence on industries and service sector is that okay so later the planning commission has come into the picture government started following the you know the recommendations given by planning commission that led to the shift from agriculture to secondary and tertiary sectors clear now let's go ahead look at this and economic development of the occupational structure look at this so the economic development of a country gives rise to different kinds of occupations clear so meaning is simple if you are depending only on agriculture there will not be any economic development and economic development means today so you are you have the workforce in all the three sectors clear so in the economy of the country and these occupations are classified into primary secondary and tertiary we have discussed in countries that are undeveloped sorry underdeveloped a huge part of the population is involved in agriculture today if you look at a country and if you say that country is an agrarian nation which is depending on more on agriculture that country is underdeveloped is it clear developed country is a country that depends more on industries so with the development of the small scale industries a lot of employment opportunities are generated in the secondary and tertiary sectors so which are labor intensive in nature right small scale industries today you have micro small and medium enterprises so large number of startups are also coming up where you require people and that is a labor intensive labor intensive means you have to depend on labor you have to depend on employees meaning you are generating more employment and the tertiary sector is also very important as it generates lots of employment that is the reason why today if you look at india our tertiary secondary sectors tertiary sector 
they are producing large amounts of large amounts of you know employment changes in the occupational structure result in the changes in economic development of the nation yes or no right what is occupational structure from agriculture you are moving to industries from there you are moving to services so change in the occupational structure is leading to the change in economic development clear and more working population is shifted from engrossment in primary sector to secondary and tertiary rate of economic development along with the with that of the per capita income is also increasing that is the reason why our per capita income was very low earlier but we started increasing our per capita income fine and all this because of the changes in the occupational structure am i clear next so i have given two points here note and also note both are important for the examination in pre independent india the occupational structure includes increased dependence on agriculture a lack of opportunities in industries and unbalanced growth that affect the economy this was our pre independent india's scenario both concepts occupational structure and development are related to each other as more percent of the population is involved in primary sector would indicate less development in the country more population is depending on agriculture that leads to less development am i clear that is the reason why so this occupational structure there should be changes in that one people should move from agriculture to industries and tertiary sector am i clear so we have almost come to an end and i have a question for you again two statements are given you are asked to consider the statements both statements may be correct both statements may be wrong either of the statements may be correct we don't know please read it more percent of the of the population involved in primary sector would indicate less development in the country just now we have answered this so obviously statement a is correct right more people depending on agriculture is an indication of the less development more percent of the population more percentage of the population involved in secondary and tertiary sectors would indicate more development in the country this is also right yes or no right so there is a change in the occupational structure and leading to the economic development and hence our answer should be both a and b are correct right what do you say my dear close friends it should be correct that's it both the statements are right so this is the end of this session so we have learnt you know the topics like you know demographic dividend what is working population what is working age population non working age population we also learnt about gva and how it is calculated right gross value added and what is the contribution of agriculture in that one what is the contribution of the you know secondary and tertiary sectors in gva that we have understood so what is the scenario of india and occupational structure in pre independent india and how it is improving now so right so we have understood very very clearly fine so that's all for the day and in the link that in the in the description that is given below our apps you know uh, link has been given please download the app and you may join any course of your choice for for your forthcoming examination and at the bottom i have also given a link with respect to telegram channel please follow me through that particular link telegram so that you know you will be given updates from time to time thank you so much i'll see you in the next session take very good care and i wish you all very 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 good luck